Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today we're going to look at Dave McKean's new graphic novel, uh, Raptor, a so called graphic novel. This is implying to me that this is going to be a series, which I really hope so. I'm, I'm really excited by that. I'm really stunned that new Dave McKean releases aren't like the huge news in the way a lot of other things are. To me, Dave McKean is one of the best living comic artists and one of the people really pushing the medium forward still. Um, such a huge name from the 80s and 90s, and his stuff seems to go under the radar now, but he's still producing amazing, amazing sophisticated works. Uh, I think his book Cages is just one of the best comics that's ever been made, and I think it's regarded as that, so I don't know why people still aren't freaking out about his his newest works. Maybe my perception of that is wrong, but um, this is somebody, when we were doing Strange Death of Alex Raymond, I was kind of looking at their rankings uh, just to get a sense of where we were at in the Amazon rankings, you know, to try and get a sense of how we were doing, and the books were supposed to come out at the same time, pretty much, and they'd been announced for about the same amount of time, and I figured they were both, like, equally important creators from that time period, so I thought that would be a good metric, and this book just didn't seem to rank very high, which really sorely disappointed me. Um, so, th this, this, the story here, you can see the beautiful art. The other thing is, after I read this book, I went back and looked at all of Dave McKean's stuff that I have, and I think I have a pretty comprehensive collection of his comic work. So going back to like Arkham Asylum, Orchid, uh, works like that, that when he first came over, that I think we all regarded as like top tier artist at the time. And it's amazing how much better he's gotten even than that, and how much more sophisticated his work is now. Uh, he's taken a turn towards the light. I mean, it still has his particular look to it. Um, it still has that dark Dave McKean look, but it seems a little bit lighter now. So it's just fascinating that someone who came out the gate as like God-level creator has continued to improve and refine their art. Um, this style is more indicative of the last couple of works that he's done. The Black Dog book as well. But this is a story that has two different worlds that are interacting. Um, his stories are always really good, too. They're very mythical. He, he's a, as good of a writer as he is an artist. But there's these two worlds that are interacting. So this is the... And they, they change styles per world, which, you know, he's definitely prone to change his style. But just beautiful art. Absolutely gorgeous artwork. The... Um, and they're interacting through a book, like people in two different worlds are writing in a, in a book, and the ending keeps changing, and they realize that's creating a bridge between the world. Uh, more like old-school Dave McKean, kind of photo painting on photographs type of abstract art. I just, I mean, his work is so lovely. I think maybe one of the biggest gripes that people could have against him is the way lettering is included. I don't know if that's a barrier to people. Um, I go back and forth on if I like how he handles lettering. The The biggest thing that I would say is kind of weird is that he tends to make his word balloon see-through. It's like not wanting to override any of the work that he's put into the art. Um, but because it's so painterly and layered, it almost makes sense. Like if it was just a solid word balloon, maybe it would be too harsh. And so that's something he's calculated out. But it is something that's I noticed that's a little weird. So I don't know, maybe there's some opposition to his work just because of a minor thing like that. But I mean, beautiful stuff. More of the painterly abstraction. I don't know. Uh, maybe my perception of how excited people are or aren't is off. But absolutely recommend this book. It's pretty, he stays within the lane of the style pretty much throughout the book, but you get these moments where things merge and he'll, he'll switch into a different style.
but beautiful books. There was also one called Black Dog that came out a few years ago. That's awesome. Uh, he usually releases his stuff through Dark Horse. The Pictures That Tick books are great. I think Sean and I are going to look at some children's books slash comic books that he did. Um, I, I don't know. I cannot recommend his, his work more. It's one of my absolute favorites. This is a thing, since I asked about uh, dust covers, I, want, I would also like to know why book publishers do this. This seems like something that could get beat up. Is it just supposed to be a bookmark? I don't know what that's about. So if anyone who knows about like book making conventions can tell me about that, I'd love to know. But everyone, go ahead and definitely order yourself a copy of this book. And like I, like I said, this was the book that I was kind of uh, tracking just our, our numbers on Amazon against. Uh, and I would actually like to see Dave McKean's book go up the rankings quite a bit. Strange though that Alex Raymond seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, so we still have pre-orders open for that. This copy here that I have is one of the misprinted copies that's missing. Wow, I opened right to the page. Uh, missing some artwork on some of the pages. But Sean Robinson, our publisher made sure that this is absolutely one of the most beautifully reproduced books you could see. Um, I'm so proud of the work we did on this. So when you're going in and ordering your copy of Raptor, if you haven't already done it, make sure you get yourself a copy of Strange Death of Alex Raymond too. Our new street date, supposedly December 1st. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. You want to see all these books? Smash that subscribe button and the like button and the bell, and then you get them.